Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. In this new episode of our KMP project, we are going to write the short code for uploading new posts, allowing our users to create and share posts in our application. In the next video, we'll move on to building the presentation layer for Android, so stay tuned for that as well. But for now, let's jump into writing the short code. All right, now, first of all, we'll need to create a method in our API service class to create new post. Now you'll need to go ahead and open post API service.kt. This is located in our common main and inside the remote package. All right, so let's scroll down and we are going to create a new method. This is going to be a suspend method and we'll call it as create post. Now this method is going to take three parameters. On one hand, we'll have the token, we'll have this new post data. Now this string will be a JSON representation of the caption and the user ID. These are the extra data we'll send in our create post request. We'll also have this image byte that is going to be of type byte array. This will represent the actual image that we want to post. Of course, this is going to return post API response. All right, now in the body of this create post method, we are going to define this variable HTTP request and we're going to call client.submit form with binary data. Now, this method needs to be passed a form data. This is a list of part data. And we can build a new form data calling this function form data to which we are going to append every element that we need to pass to this form data list. It's also going to take a block lambda with the HTTP request builder as the receiver. This is to configure the HTTP request. Now we come to this later. Now for the first element, we are going to pass our new post data and the key for this is going to be post data. So you just need to call this function append. Now for the second element, we'll need to pass the actual image. So again, we're going to call append. For the key, we are going to pass post image. And for the value, we are going to pass image byte. But that's not all. For this to be recognized as a file, we'll need to pass headers. So we need to call this headers. And for the headers, we'll need to specify the content type and the content disposition. So let's go ahead and call headers dot build this method here. And we are going to call append. First of all, we'll pass the content type as image because we are going to upload image. And for the content disposition, the value is going to be file name equals post.jpg. Now this post.jpg will be replaced as the original name of this image file. That is for the form data. Let's now configure our HTTP request. So we'll come here inside our block lambda and we are first of all going to set the endpoint to be forward slash post forward slash create. And we'll set the token to be the token that was passed to our create post uh, method. This is going to be our multi parts request. So we need to call this extension function that we created in our previous video. And for uh, the method, we're going to set this as an HTTP method dot post. All right. Lastly, we'll need to return our post API response. So for the code, we'll just pass HTTP request dot status. And for the data, you will need to call HTTP request dot body. All right, now for the next step, we'll need to go ahead and open post repository, the interface and right below this get post method, we'll go ahead and define create post method. This is going to take a caption as string and image bytes as byte array. It returns result of type post. Now let's open post repository implementation and we'll need to provide an implementation for this. Right below this get post method, we are going to override the create post method. Now, as always, let's call a safe API call and we'll pass the dispatcher. And in here, we'll first need to get the current user data. And for that, we will call our, oops. So we call our preferences, user preferences dot get user data. Now below this current user data, we are going to define a new variable that we call post data. 
And for this, we need to call a JSON dot uh, from Kotlin X utilization dot encode to string. Now you need to take uh, this variant here that takes a serializer and a value. So for the serializer, we are going to call a new post data, new post params, sorry, dot serializer. Now new post param is just a data class that I have defined here inside remote post models dot kt file. It has two properties, the caption and the user ID. Now these are the extra information that we need to send as post data. Right now coming back inside post repository implementation, we need now to pass the value and for the value, we'll just create a new post params for the caption. We will pass uh, the caption that was passed to our method. And for the user ID, we need to call current user data dot ID. Great. Now below post data, we will define a new variable that we are going to call API response. And for this one, we need to call post API service dot create post. To this create post method, we'll need to pass three argument the token. And for this token, we call just our current user data dot token. For new post, we we'll call post data. And for image byte, we we'll just pass the image byte that was passed here. Right now below API response variable, we are going to check if API response dot code equals to http status code dot okay now in this case we need to return result success so we call result dot success for the data we'll pass api response and dot data dot post now if api status code is not okay in that case we need to return result dot error and so for the message, we'll pass API response and dot data dot message. And if this message is null, we just call our constant dot unexpected error. Okay, guys, now a quick note here. If you followed the backend part carefully, you probably know that for the data, we were just returning an acknowledgement for when the post was inserted. But as you can see here, I'm force unwrapping this post to convert it to the domain post, which normally would crash our application. What I did is that I've actually updated the return data so that it contains also this post, this post that was inserted. This is to save us an extra API call for when we create a new post, meaning we don't have to request for the updated data to get our updated posts list. Before we move on to the iOS side, I will show you the updated server code. For now, you can check uh, my GitHub repository. The link is in the video description for the server project so that you can compare with your actual code to see what has changed. All right. Now for the next task, we need to go ahead and create a use case. Inside this use case directory that is located under the domain and under the post directory inside our common main and shared module, let's go ahead and create a new Kotlin class and that we are going to name as create post use case. Now select class and hit enter. Let me close this to get a little bit of space. So from here, we need to, ex to extend the coin component so that we can inject our repository directly inside this create post use case. And that's what's going to do. We'll create this private val repository and we'll call a by inject. So we'll need to inject our post repository and let's go ahead and override the operator invoke. Oops. Um, suspend operator function invoke. Now for this invoke operator function, we'll need to pass the caption in form of string. And we also need to pass image byte as a byte array. Now this is going to return a result of type post. And inside this invoke method, we first of all going to call a with function from Kotlin. Now with our caption, we need to do a little bit of a validation here. Now, if the caption is blank or the length of our caption is greater than 200 characters, we are going to return result error and we'll create this invalid input post caption message inside our 
constant so let's go ahead inside our constant and below invalid input bio message will define this constant invalid input post caption message invalid caption caption cannot be empty or exceed 200 characters that message we're going to return whenever our caption that length is greater than 200 characters right so after this validation we can now return from our repository repository dot create post for the caption we'll pass our caption and for the image byte we'll pass image byte all right now lastly you'll need to go ahead and open shared module dot kt inside our di package and now here we just and here we just need to provide uh we just need to call factory of create post use case this is the only dependency we need to provide in this episode because that's the only new class or new file that we have created all right so that's it for this video i will see you in the next one where we'll be building the presentation layer for android as for now take care bye